Today we're going to look at um, the difference between a discrete relation and a continuous relation. First of all, the definition of relation. A relation is any set of ordered pairs. Another way to, um, to write set is a, uh, a group of ordered pairs, just any clump of them. Having trouble making an O. Okay, uh, I've shown you a couple of these examples in class. Yoda is a group of actually ordered triples. Uh, Yoda is a computer graphic image that uh, is in three-dimensional space. So every one of these little points we see is uh, an, a, you know, a three-number ordered triple. And you know, all together, th that's a, a relation. There's a puppy dog right here and a poorly illustrated you know, model in 3D space. So those are all relations, all groups of points or ordered pairs. Okay, a little distraction. We're back. Okay, so a discrete relation versus a continuous relation. Here I have some examples. Cricket Wireless, their cell phone company, they charge 39 cents per minute for roaming calls. So I'm going to go ahead and create an independent variable. Uh, this will be my time axis. So everything I graph along here will be time. And then everything I graph along my y-axis will have to be my cost. And it will be a total cost. That says total cost, if you can't read my perfect handwriting. Um, and our interval here will be 1. So I'll have 1. This will be in minutes. And 2, and 3, 4, 5, and so on and so forth. My... Uh, my amounts here, we'll do um, a 50 cent interval, and I'll just go ahead and do $1 right there. So this will be cost in dollars, and then a buck 50, and then $2, and then 250 and $3, and so on and so forth. So here we go. I'm going to graph some ordered pairs. Now, if you don't talk on the phone, then you don't pay any money. So zero time is zero money. That's the nice thing about Cricket. You only pay for uh, uh, what you what you use. I'm not trying to advertise cricket though. Um, okay, after one minute, you pay 39 cents. So we're underneath the 50 cent marker, which would be there. And in two minutes, then you're up to what 78 cents. So you're there. Let's fast forward. In five minutes, I think I can do that one in my head. Um, a buck 95. So we would be almost to two minutes. And what we see is a distinct separation of points. You don't actually pay for a minute and a half. In the world of business, if you talk on the phone for a minute and a half, they're going to charge you for the full two minutes. So what we have here, and I can just estimate these by filling them in approximately, is a distinct separation of points. Meaning, one minute you pay this much, two minutes you pay this much, three, four, five, it, it's uh, all a different amount, and there is a gap in between these points, because if you're at the three and a half minute mark, it just jumps to four minutes. Now, uh, later on, we'll start talking about this type of situation. We actually talk about that when we talk about functions, and this is called a step function. We don't have to know about them just yet, but... In a little while, that will be actually um, a better indication of what Cricket, Cricket Wireless is uh, doing to charge. Um, anyways, more on that on another YouTube video. Okay, the height of a ball is thrown through the air. Again, we need an independent, uh, that's not how you spell independent, hold on, back up, an independent variable and a dependent variable. So what are our variables going to be? Well, we're going to look at the height as it's thrown through the air. So probably our other variable would be time. So whenever I try to graph something like this, I'm always thinking, OK, I've got two axes. Um, should I make this one the, the height or the time? And then this one would be the other one. Well, which one's independent? Should I say 
um, the height depends on the time, or should I say the time depends on the height? Well, I always make a sentence out of it. And as I'm thinking about a ball that's going through the air, its height, as it's being kicked through the air, depends on the time in which I am uh, recording it. So if I set a stopwatch at 1 and it goes for 10 seconds, the height of the ball depends on what time I'm looking at. So my independent variable, like always, is time. And height will be over here. Okay, we'll do time in seconds. That'll be fun. We'll do height in feet because we have a good kicker. And here's my ball. I kick my ball into the air and it goes up and it goes back down. So what's that look like? Well, it looks something like this. The ball at moment zero is in your hands. It's a little bit off the ground. You kick it and then it goes back down. Whoa, sorry, I'm not very smooth. And then it hits and maybe it dribbles a little bit, but we just ran out of graph space. Now, even if our um, our interval is one foot, or height and feet, so two foot, three foot, so maybe it starts, wow, that's a really high position to kick the ball. Um, we don't have a jump from, where is it, from second one to second two. It is constantly increasing and then constantly decreasing its height over time, and there is no clear separation of points. So continuous data is no clear, or I use the word distinct over here, same basic thought, no clear separation, separation of points. Wow, that was a lot of talking for a little bit of knowledge. All right, a type of data is discrete if there is a blank on the number line, a space on the number line between each two possible values. Continuous data does not have a distinct separation between ordered pairs. Okay, types of data that are always continuous. I'll give it to you. Natural, nature, natural, natural data, nature data. I don't really know. Let's look at this. A student score on a test. Well, definitely there's a difference between points. You get, in at least my class, uh, you know, a difference of points. You have a 91% or a 92%. I don't give half points. So that is definitely discrete. I'm just deciding if it's discrete or continuous right now. Okay, the number of times a person has to take his or her driver's test before passing. Well, certainly you take it once or you take it twice. You can't take it one and a half times. So that's discrete. The height of a tree as it ages. Well, that is natural data because a height of a tree is constantly growing. There's no like it jumps from one foot to two foot in the blink of an eye. So that's continuous. The number of days it rains in a year. Well, you're either going to rain in a day or you're not. So it's either going to be like 200 days or 100 days or 101 days. So actually that's discrete data. And we're not talking about the amount of rainfall or the accumulation of rainfall. We're just talking about how many days. You can count that number. Uh, the number of days it rains in the history of our planet. Well, it's constantly changing. It's always rain, uh, raining somewhere. I don't know what the answer to that one is. I'm going to go the number of days in... I'm going to go with discrete again. You know what? I'm going discrete because, you know, from today all the way back, it is probably every day somewhere on the planet it rained. But there's a countable number. And if you can count it, then it should be discrete. That's a confusing one. I should take that one off. The exact temperature of a room throughout the day. Well, the temperature of a room throughout the day is fluctuating. I know that one is continuous because you can't um, you know, exactly track the temperature. It's always going slightly up and slightly down as people enter the room and leave and open and close the door. Um, the length of time a light bulb will work before burning out. Uh, ooh, the length of time. I don't know. That one's hard, too. Um, I would say that that is a countable amount of time, so that would be discrete. Wow, that's kind of tough. Okay, all of these are, again, discrete or continuous, and they have answers on the very next page. So if you try all of those on your own and then look at those, there's even explanations, and I'll just blink them back and forth like that. One more time, the number of suitcases lost by an airline, the number must be a whole number, so it's discrete. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that, and bye bye